What does this famous ode to joy stand for? It's usually perceived as a kind of a ode to humanity as such, to the brotherhood and freedom of all people. And what strikes the eye here is the universal adaptability of this well-known melody. It can be used by political movements which are totally opposed to each other. In Nazi Germany, it was widely used to celebrate great public events. In Soviet Union, Beethoven was lionized and the Ode to Joy was performed almost as a kind of a communist song. In China, during the time of the Great Cultural Revolution, when almost all Western music was prohibited, the Ninth Symphony was accepted. It was allowed to play it as a piece of progressive bourgeois music. At the extreme right, in South Rhodesia, before it became Zimbabwe, it proclaimed independence to be able to postpone the abolishment of apartheid. There, for those couple of years of independent South Rhodesia, again, the melody of the Ode to Joy with changed lyrics, of course, was the anthem of the country. At the opposite end, when Abimael Guzman, Presidente Gonzalo, the leader of Sendero Luminoso, the Shining Path, the extreme leftist guerrilla in Peru, when he was asked by a journalist which piece of music is his favorite, he claimed again Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, Ode to Joy. When Germanys were still divided, and their team was appearing together at Olympics. When one of the Germans won golden medal, again, Ode to Joy was played instead of either East or West German national anthem. And even now, today, Ode to Joy is the unofficial anthem of European Union. So it's truly that we can imagine a kind of a perverse scene of universal fraternity where Osama bin Laden is embracing President Bush, Saddam is embracing Fidel Castro, white racist is embracing Mao Zedong, and all together they sing Ode to Joy. It works. And this is how every ideology has to work. It's never just meaning. It always has to also work as an empty container, open to all possible meanings. It's, you know, that gut feeling that we feel when we experience something pathetic and we say, oh my God, I'm so moved, there is something so deep. But you never know what this depth is. It's a void. Uh, now, of course, there is a catch here. The catch is that, of course, this neutrality of a frame is never as neutral as it appears. Here, I think, the perspective of Alex from the Clockwork Orange enters. We were all feeling a bit shagged and fagged and fashed, it having been an evening of some small energy expenditure, oh, my brothers. So we got rid of the auto and stopped off at the Corova for a nightcap. Why is Alex, this ultimate cynical delinquent, the hero of Clockwork Orange, why is he so fascinated, overwhelmed, when he sees the lady singing Beethoven's Ode to Joy? And it was like for a moment, oh my brothers, some great bird had flown into the milk bar and I felt all the melancholy little hairs on my plot standing endwise. 
and the shivers crawling up like slow Malenki lizards and then down again because I knew what she sang. It was a bit from the glorious ninth by Ludwig van. Whenever an ideological text says all humanity unite in brotherhood, joy and so on, you should always ask, okay, 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 but are these all really all or is someone excluded? I think Alex, the delinquent from Clockwork Orange, identifies with this place of exclusion. And the great genius of Beethoven is that he literally staged this exclusion. All of a sudden, the whole tone changes into a kind of a carnivalesque rhythm. It's no longer this sublime beauty. Excuse me, brother. I ordered this two weeks ago. Can you see if it's arrived yet, please? Just a minute. We hear this vulgar music precisely when Alex enters a shopping arcade and we can see from his movements that now he feels at home. He's like fish in the water. Pardon me, ladies. Beethoven is not a cheap celebrator of the brotherhood of humanity and so on. We are one big happy family enjoying freedom, dignity and so on. Enjoying that, are you, my darling? The first part, which is falsely celebrated today, you hear it in all official events, is clearly identified with Beethoven as ideology, and then the second part tells the true story of that which disturbs the official ideology and of the failure of the official ideology to constrain it, to tame it. This is why Beethoven was doing something which may appear difficult to do. He was already, in a purely musical work, practicing critique of ideology. Mm -hmm. 